I believe we are live right now. Welcome to everyone. We have today the interesting discussion about our ongoing topic that is everyone, everyone on every call. Interesting discussion, uh, sorry, uh, discusses in the crypto and Web3 industry. So what's going on with the market? after the epic FTX crash, uh, after what has happened with Alameda, after bankruptcy of the leading companies in crypto trading, in crypto exchanges. Uh, and today we invited people that really know what they're talking about. Uh, they are not uh, professional speakers who are doing blah, blah without building anything. They're real builders uh, who actually create solutions that we will use uh, during uh, the foreseen future. And uh, I want to present you Leo Kangin, Head of uh, Business Development at Ava Decentralized Protocol. Hi, Leo. Hi. Hi, Nanny. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thanks a lot for joining us from Israeli today. And I want to uh, also present Alex Minsu, who is co-founder uh, and CEO at PharmXYZ that uh, is uh, the solution for simplifying yield farming. Hi, Alex. Hi, Nelly. Nice to be here with you. Thanks for the you, invitation. You are building complicated stuff, uh, but you are simplifying it for uh, users and mass adoption, which is really very cool. Yes. Uh, you, <laughs> I will definitely give you a chance to talk about that. And um, hi, Mark. Mark, a venture analyst at in mind. Hey there. Hi, Nelly. Pleasure to be uh, here. Always. Hi, everyone. Good to see you, Mark. <laughs> Good to we see you, Leo and Alex. We are waiting for a couple of yes. more people to join us. So uh, hope you will see them very soon. And meanwhile, I want uh, to give you a few minutes of time so that you can explain uh, from Web3 perspective what you are building, guys. Uh, Leo, Alex, uh, can you... You know, as real uh, founders, co-founders, startups, hustlers, uh, in a couple of minutes, not not a big speech, one hour, but in a couple of minutes, what you are building and why it's that important for Web3 industry. Leo, would you love to start? Yeah, sure. I'd love to, uh, to start, actually. Yeah, you might know that there are like many uh, ecosystems appeared, like different blockchains, right? And we uh, we firmly believe that the future like is multi-chain and cross-chain. So and the future where the developers can deploy the application like simultaneously on all chains, right? And and where there is no like fragmentation of the liquidity and where users forget about the blockchain they're working on. So able to concentrate uh, on the product that brings the value. So this is like uh, the grounding ideas, and basically uh, we are building like a cross-chain. A liquidity and data protocol that helping projects become multi-chain and cross-chain uh, that consists of like liquidity protocol um, like MMDEX, bridge liquidity aggregator, liquidity access hub, right? And, and the cross-chain data protocol that basically like a messenger protocol so you can send any data from one smart corner to another one on another chain, right? And make your app cross-chain. So this is like the main idea because currently uh, it's it's not it's it's really uh, challenging for for projects uh, to go multi-chain. They have to um, yeah build apps like on a chain, split the liquidity among multiple pools, and uh, rely on multiple usually centralized bridges. So this is actually what we are um, building right now and trying to solve these problems like in in an efficient, decentralized way. So in, in short, this is about us. Yeah. Just recently, I was participating in the discussion in Reddit, and uh, people were talking about different bridges, especially yeah. in, in the context, what bridges they can trust and what they shouldn't trust and uh, what are the risks while using bridges. And uh, I was uh, leaving there a message that when Ava goes live, the bridges will be not necessary at all. Is it true or I just uh, lied to those people? <laughs> Well, actually, it's a bit difficult. I, I, I believe that, uh, I, I mean, all, all of these bridges will also will be kind of growing, right, in some way. So there are like different, uh, uh, you know, approach. And I believe there is a space for everyone with a different approach, right? So we are just trying to simplify the way for developers to build uh, like cross-chain apps, right? Uh, so 
I guess some, I, I still believe that it will be like uh, some bridges will be with like large number of and TVL locked, right? Yeah, yeah, that is true. Uh, okay, Alex, your turn now. You are going multi-chain, by the way, with Farm XYZ. Uh, so would be interesting to learn if instead of going multi-chain by yourself with uh, all the force of the developers, you will finally use Ava and, uh, and um, make in one solution uh, all your needs, yeah? So tell us about Farm XYZ. Yes, so Farm XYZ, the mission is to simplify investing in the DeFi products. So we're starting with yield farms, liquidity pools, and uh, different uh, yield strategies. Just uh, building a really simple to use solution for the average crypto retail investor. Um, and there's lots of things there, right? So uh, most, most DeFi platforms are just way too complex. You've got like 18 to 20 different steps if you want to invest in one of those assets. You can't do risk management. You can't do portfolio tracking that, uh, that well. Uh, there's a bunch of missing stuff. Uh, we're fixing all of that by building a layer that standardizes everything into small smart contracts that behave like traditional ETFs. So it just allows us to build a really simple to use interface for that brings it down to uh, for everybody to use in one click, right? Instead of doing 18 different steps, we've got one button, invest, and then another button, withdraw. <laughs> and uh, you always see the value. You always see the price. Um, you've got uh, everything there. Uh, and yes, cross chain is a big uh, is a big one for us. We already have a partnership with Rubik to do cross chain uh, exchanges for fifteen thousand uh, different assets. Uh, and uh, yes, Ava protocol uh, is something that uh, we are looking at to do the full uh, X asset. That's why that's how, what we call our our uh, assets. Um, uh, to do the whole cross-chain X asset uh, uh, investing. We want people to, yes, forget that there's that there are multiple chains there and just have a wallet on one chain uh, and not worry about uh, all of the other stuff, right? Just bring your money somewhere. It doesn't matter where, bring them to an EVM compatible chain with an on with an on-ramp. And then just invest from there, fully DeFi, fully decentralized uh, in a secure way. Uh, and not worry about all the technical stuff behind it. That would be amazing. And actually, all those that criticize uh, Web3 and blockchain uh, uh, and uh, claim that there is no mass adoption because of the fault of the founders and uh, Web3 entrepreneurs, they say that uh, only when uh, Web3 founders will learn how to position and sell their products without even naming blockchain or whatever tech stack is behind, only then you can expect any kind of mass adoption. Um, yeah, glad a, you, yeah, sorry. That's a good point. I, I completely agree actually on that. Yeah, and uh, I see that everyone here and uh, is uh, in one line. Uh, Fido joined us, Fido Fiderson from uh, By Barter. Fido, can you give us a short, brief, one-minute intro. What is by barter and why it is important for decentralization for Web3? Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure um, being here. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Actually, in a, in a nutshell, by barter sets decentralized crypto free. In a nutshell, everyone is talking about decentralized crypto. There are thousands of decentralized projects built out there, but well, it's quite unfortunate that none of them is actually self-sustaining because, I mean, without centralized exchanges, they can't get funds into their projects. So everyone is talking about decentralization, decentralization, and decentralization never had like a conduit for funds to get in and out of decentralized projects in a decentralized format. Okay, so the only tool used to access decentralized projects, DeFi protocols, and I mean, all the decentralized projects out there are self-custody wallets. And for you to get funds into the self-custody wallets to go access decentralized projects, it's just funny that um, you, you need to have accounts on centralized exchanges to make this happen. So 
if anything happens to centralized exchanges, just as, I mean, FTX is gone now, I mean, it means all the decentralized projects would be gone. So Barbata is the superhero. We are the ones who are going to save decentralized exchanges and decentralized projects because we're enabling these users, you know, to become their own exchanges, their own exchanges run by themselves directly from the, the self-custody wallets which they utilize to access these projects. So what has Bybata done? Bybata has actually enabled, built um, a decentralized, non-custodial and borderless P2P platform that enables users of self-custodial wallets conduct P2P transactions. This way, users of self-custodial wallets can fund their wallets and withdraw from their wallets utilizing P2P, okay? Straight and direct from their, their wallets, okay? So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, our project gives decentralized crypto the independence it truly deserves from centralized systems. We're talking about decentralization. We are bringing back the spirit of Satoshi alive in the Biobata project. Awesome. You. Peter, I love your confidence and energy, uh, especially today. Uh, that was bright for sure. <laughs> and now let's let's come, guys, uh, to the topic of the, today's discussion. So uh, how do you see actually what uh, what impact we will see from FTX, from Alameda crash uh, on the Web3 industry developments? specifically new web three projects that are like you three building growing developing on the market so how it impacts um who wants to start uh it, did it make more harm for web three development or more positive uh effect so who wants i see leo is shaking the head so maybe maybe you want to start how i interact with people always shaking my hand uh my my head sorry yeah, i am just kidding I, anyways uh yeah i can start actually there i i believe there's some upside upside downs right so i'm, I'm i mean i believe that the whole uh like ftx uh collapse right this might be like a black swan event right for uh, that will likely have a like ripple effect through the the whole industry, including Web three, right? But the the good side is that um, that the world of Web three like continues to evolve, right? And uh, we are, we are seeing more uh, developers uh, deploying their applications, making their apps uh, in more than just script and DeFi, right? So focusing on 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 the broader world of Web three apps, right? Uh, and uh that in fact they can create like a more open and decentralized internet so uh, and yeah this is actually one of the positive uh, things i, I believe because uh, now it's it's kind of obvious that uh we would need more trans transparency right and uh, and it's good good it's good also that there is like a strong community right now still uh that committed to building like decentralized future right so yeah, I, I believe that there is some positive trend in for in like you know for the long term health of the Web three uh, ecosystem. Yeah. But did you see this trend already? I know Ava has the largest community of like uh, three hundred thousand of people in your community. Did you notice any trend already? Uh well, uh, yeah, we. I mean, in the in the recent like last uh, in two weeks after after this collapse, we've been all seeing the uh, the huge spike in the, in the Dex volumes, right? I mean, if you check check Defi Llama right now, you will see it kind of get back to the same level, right? So we are not seeing like specific like uh, you know uh, trends uh, inside the community. I mean, we we just launched it to the main app like last Friday evening. So, and I mean, the community is quite excited about that. There's still lots of things to do. So, I, I guess we will be like following uh, the way, right? Uh, so, by the way, congratulations with the main net launch. Looking forward to test it myself as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nelly. Yeah. 
Uh, Alex, uh, I have a little bit different question to you. Uh, how do you believe uh, what has happened with FTX? Is it mismanagement or is it some kind of, you know, logical end uh, of uh, any uh, centralized crypto business uh, at the end of the day uh, due to complexity of regulations and uh, specifics? Well, no, unfortunately, it's not mismanagement. I mean, uh, the FTX uh, the terms of service said clearly that they don't own the funds of their customers and they aren't allowed to move them anywhere. So it's clearly just theft, right? Uh, and uh, the Probably the, the legal implications of that will uh, will show in a while, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, the the good thing on a DeFi uh, project with with this is uh, things would have been spotted way earlier, right? When move, when funds start to move uh, on a DeFi project, a lot of people start asking questions and why, and it's all public on chain. Um, you can't really see that on a centralized exchange. Um, and just to answer your question earlier, um, I, I agree with Leo with everything he said. Uh, and I think um, the overall, the, the market will have a small boost now, but we still need to fix a lot of stuff in the DeFi ecosystem before being able to bring the whole, uh, the whole rest of the market to, towards it, right? A lot of people still don't understand how to how to use these products. Uh, so but how can you fix this stuff? I mean, you say you need to fix a lot of stuff. All of you are from DeFi, not just Web3, but DeFi specifically. So what exactly stuff needs to be fixed? Well, I think it's uh, on our uh, mission and our job, right, as entrepreneurs to fix all of the issues that we're uh, seeing and just test everything with the users and uh, see where they get stuck and uh, fix everything, um, right? And uh, there there are a lot, lots of things. I mean, there are uh, usability issues. Uh, most DeFi platforms don't have translations nowadays. You're just not talking to uh, to everybody. Uh, you've, the connect wallet flows are really hard. Uh, there are, the mobile interfaces are really hard. A lot of people just want to use this on mobile. Uh, MetaMask on mobile is still a whole mess uh, of, uh, of an experience. Uh, you need better UX, better UI, uh, cross-chain interaction. And this is where uh, Leo comes in. That's still a big, big problem. Uh, accessibility for uh, the people who aren't uh, necessarily um, you know, who can't necessarily fit in a, in a normal category is still a big problem. So, um, yeah, a, a lot of stuff to build. A lot of stuff to build. Uh, agree with you. Uh, Fido, question to you. Uh, since Bybarter is also a kind of direct competitor of Binance P2P, uh, tell me, how do you look at uh, the initiative announced yesterday by CZ uh, from Binance that they put 1 billion of USD for industry recovery initiative, ERI. Uh, do you believe uh, they do it? Uh, it? First, do you guys believe that it will help with the industry recovery? Because for me personally, it's really not clear how they are going to use it. Uh, it did not state anywhere that they are going to invest this one billion in startups. Uh, it was uh, some, you know, gray area kind of buyback, illiquid tokens or whatever else. I hope they will not buy back FTT. Uh, and uh, another question, what is the real reason? Is it goodwill like Robin Hood uh, to help the industry or is it a marketing trick uh, to bring back the trust uh, from the community to centralize the monopoly? Thank you very much. Um, CZ is one of those who has benefited greatly from the vision of um, Satoshi, okay? He's built um, a great business when it comes to his model. And all I see him doing is strategically putting himself there to, you know, be on top of things. Um, it, it is good when you look at it from the business perspective, but um, when you look at it from the freedom that the blockchain brings in the space, I think we need to be very careful because it would be very dangerous 
for the crypto industry to be controlled by just one player. It means the freedoms which we have gained from um, the use of the blockchain. I mean, we are freely handing that over to one entity. And um, it's scary. People like me will believe so much in um, the vision and what the capabilities of the blockchain. We, we are so scared, you know, that one player should be, you know, running the whole space. It's, it's, it's no more what it should be. And I mean, I think we should be cautious about that. He is a businessman and he will do everything to um, establish his position in the space strategically. That's, that's my personal opinion. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I can't have any arguments towards that. Uh, Mark, what do you think? Well, I'd like to reply on uh, the question, given that I work closely with Web3 startups and investors. So uh, what, what, if it's positive or negative? So I'm usually a positive person and usually the market heals itself, but we cannot deny that uh, it had a huge impact on the market. And uh, really like investors are more now uh, uh, afraid of uh, security, not in terms of market only, but in terms where their money is going, the money of the depositors. Because when they fund any, any startup, you know, they, they, the customer wants to know where his money is going. Otherwise it will collapse. And uh, so we are living really in, um, in a period of uncertainty in Web3. And uh, I mean, the market is healing itself in terms of every time we have a crash or something or a, a start a company doesn't work, but this is for the better. And now we have great entrepreneurs such as the guys here, so building new ideas. And I think they will build and learn from the mistakes of uh, what we are seeing from previous uh, uh, startups. So uh, yeah, I, I'm quite positive because we will have better solutions and maybe in terms of regulations, because this is the main problem and uncertainty. But uh, I'm, I'm quite positive on the long run. Yeah, I heard from one uh, financial guy today that uh, he guarantees uh, if Europe will survive this winter, not crypto winter, but <laughs> this uh, climate winter uh, due to all this, you know, story with gas and prices and etc. Then already in April, we will see the next bull run. That is what he claimed. And it okay, I explained it in one phrase, but he explained it to me during like 15, 20 minutes with a lot of complicated terms and proofs and uh, uh, a, a lot of stuff. Uh, well, <laughs> I cannot only cross my fingers here. Leo, Alex, uh, what do you think? Uh, what will happen with this industry initiative? This yeah. billion hidden somewhere in in a CZ pocket? Yeah, that's a, that's actually a good uh, question. So I guess it's it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful headline for any any media, right? So I, I I prefer the point that it's more like part of the strategy right now of like PR strategy and all of the stuff, like uh, saying that we will help you guys. Don't worry, right? We'll save the industry. Anyways, uh, um, I, I'm seeing I see that uh, CZ is doing a great job in promoting the self-custody as well, like uh, saying about trust wallet, uh, like maybe every day, right? So I guess you, you maybe you've seen the, to the token price of trust wallet kind of, um, yeah, changed like uh, like 100% at least, right? So, and uh, I, I think there are like more sectors will be like investing in into DeFi, right? Versions of that, uh, like C5 products and into self-custody, uh, and um, and we even actually um, like last week we got a conversation with KuCoin uh, Ventures, right? And I mean KuCoin um, KCC chain as well. So they are also really open on collaborating, integrating our solutions. And I I I I, I see that some sectors that do understand the value of the self custody stories and DeFi, they will be investing more right into the space i mean this is a bit a bit different topic but i i just just wanted to mention it uh, 
Interesting. Alex, what do you think of this? Uh, yeah, so I, uh, about uh, the whole DeFi part with the CZ, I was uh, actually recently uh, uh, in uh, Lisbon uh, Web Summit and uh, the, uh, Binance had an event uh, at the same time there. And CZ was there, we've met, and he was actually talking that they aren't necessarily married to the whole centralized exchange idea. And his plan long term is to actually be decentralized. Uh, so they're probably heading that way, uh, but it will take some time. And yeah, the, the tech isn't necessarily there yet, right? We can't run, uh, we can't really run Binance on a blockchain nowadays. Um, and yes, the, the tech will eventually get there and uh, probably uh, one, they will be one of the players to, to uh, be there first. Uh, I think on the on the one billion investment uh, uh, fund, uh, it's um, well, it's clearly a good marketing push and uh, a good way to get some uh, tokens at a discount, right? Because the market is how it is. Uh, but it's also a good sign, a good sign to all other VCs that uh, it's normal to keep investing during these times. Uh, and uh, not just uh, stop and wait for uh, good times to come back because uh, good startups need funding and uh, uh, need a way to build during the bear markets, right? Uh, Alex, we also have a question to you from the chat. What, uh, but I think it can be uh, addressed to all the speakers. What uh, do you think about the decentralized wallets collecting IP addresses, which was announced today but by MetaMask. Uh, sorry, I missed this announcement, so I have no clue what <laughs> does it mean. <laughs> I missed it too, but uh, well, I, I can pretty much guess what they mean because everybody wants to do uh, user tracking and understand how, uh, how many users they have and uh, how they're using the uh, product. So probably MetaMask is doing it for uh, analytics. Uh, on the wallet side, you've got a lot of options, right? So if you don't like MetaMask, you can always use Trust Wallet, which is Binance's wallet, right? or uh, just a Coinbase wallet, right? There's a lot of options out there. Uh, and some of them have pretty good uh, UI. Uh, I would just uh, focus on getting Wallet Connect to uh, work better from a tech point of view, to be honest. And my question, uh, let let me be a, a, a new newbie today. Uh, why people need so many wallets? Uh, is it really the case? Uh, for example, Ava is uh, building their protocol. They have their stable currency. Uh, they have uh, their decks, etc., and most probably will have uh, their own wallet. Um, Buy Barter works with different wallets. Uh, FarmXYZ uh, works with different wallets as well. Uh, as well. Uh, but my question is, we have quite a lot of wallets right now, uh, some top ones, some small ones, and uh, I see like minimum three, four new startups building wallets per week. My question is, is it necessary? And how, how do you look at it? Uh, from my point of view, well, it's, uh, it's a good thing that people are trying out new ideas and new ways of actually uh, simplifying the wallet interaction. I think uh, there is a big problem still with getting users to create that wallet and understand what they're doing and then do that safely, right? Uh, getting a Web2 user to create the wallet and write down those 12 words and uh, 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 go through all of that process is still a big, big hop on the on the uh, Web3 and DeFi wagon, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good thing that we have a lot of diversity. It's horrible from a user experience point of view. Uh, we clearly need a better way to actually be able to use all of that diversity, right? And uh, a simpler way to connect to whatever wallet we use uh, on, on our phone. Okay, uh, Fido, how many wallets do we need? <laughs> um, well, the space is still very, very, very new. 
and there's still so much room for innovation. We can't say that the current state of wallets right now is it. So there's, there's need for people to become more innovative and actually try to fix um, the challenges that um, you can find while utilizing um, self-custodial wallets as, as it is. So I believe um, there's room. I mean, not all the projects out there would stand the test of time, but this, the number of wallets out there just indicate that the new wallets being um, created just show how much people are interested in the decentralized um, crypto space and how much of their time they're willing to invest in like making a difference. So we could have like uh, a friendlier system of um, utilizing um, um, decentralized exchanges and interacting with um, our own crypto. You know, like if, if, if we have, if we come to a point, when we come to a point when um, the wallet of um, the dream of crypto users is established, I mean, it will make things easier. Right now, people struggle to store their, their um, seed phrases and they're actually scared. So we, I personally hope to see when these wallets um, with better user interfaces would be built. And surely we're always there to ensure that whatever wallet you utilize, Vibata is always there to ensure that you have access to liquidity so you could conduct P2P transactions. Yeah. Love this. So you're not that much competing. You are more like uh, collaborating, yeah, building, building well, networks. We aren't competing at all. We aren't, we aren't competitors. Rather, we're making, um, we're partners in the space to ensure that crypto is accessible to more, more, more people, okay? So we are collaborators, we're partners. Um, I mean, we could help decentralized exchanges scale up their users by, you know, um, educating them on how they could utilize their self-custody wallets. So if they can utilize the various self-custody wallets out there and we just do the job, focus on doing the job of educating people on how they could be comfortable utilizing the wallets out there, and how they can, you know, fund their wallets and withdraw crypto from their wallets utilizing our platform. I mean, it, it's it's a win-win for everybody, both for decentralized exchanges, launch pads, the users who utilize self-custodial wallets, and the many other decentralized um, projects out there in the space. So we're partners, not competitors. So Leo, when your DEX, Ava DEX will be live, you know whom to approach in order to educate your audience about self-custody wallets. Yeah, yeah, uh, now I know. <laughs> and uh, uh, what do you think about multiplay wallets? Yeah, I, I, I personally believe that there will be like in the future will be like uh, several large players that will kind of get the, the, the big part of the market. And what the, the Binance is trying to do right now is trust is actually kind of take the market share and competing with MetaMask for it as well. Um, so, but from another perspective, uh, in the real, you know, like um, real life, it's fine to have several bank accounts and several different bank accounts with different accounts inside of them. So, and we don't expect that just one app to access all of the bank accounts, right? So it's fine to have one bank account in one country, another one in in especially for the company structures and more like uh, structured financial um, things, right? So, uh, but if from the, the just the user perspective, I, I, I think there is no need to have like many uh, wallets, right? And also, uh, yeah, I think it's important to, to, to mention that all of these L1s, like L layer one ecosystems incentivize developers to build uh, wallets, right? Uh, to make sure they drive, drive more users into the ecosystem. So that's why I believe so many apps appeared because, uh, because of these grants and all of this support from the ecosystems like Near Wallet, Solana Wallet, and all of this wallets kind of uh, separated, uh, living uh, like in a separate, separately from each other, right? Uh, and they're more thinking about how they're gonna get users to the ecosystem, less about the user, the end user that just want to, to kind of 
uh, do simple stuff, right, with crypto without thinking about the, the uh, like, the ecosystem or the blockchain, right, the world it is working on. So this is um, my thoughts on it, yeah. Actually, I like your analogy with uh, multiple bank accounts and uh, also your comment about protocols financing wallets. Uh, and this leads me to another question, which I also see in our live chat uh, about taxation and regulation, because what I noticed, you are right, uh, a lot of protocols, they are interested to give grants and support to wallets and DeFi projects, but uh, they do not do it directly because uh, according to regulation, they are not eligible to finance DeFi projects. So they are creating different models where separate entity, dot or company, affiliated, whatever, uh, is uh, uh, considering uh, grants or finances for DeFi. Uh, same with the bank accounts. Yeah, uh, normally, at least in 22 yet, or I, I do not see a lot of Web3 companies that do all the operations in crypto. They need bank accounts. They need some legal entities, uh, at least uh, to raise funds, to operate, to pay salaries for people that can't accept crypto. And uh, you know that uh, we briefly discussed before this uh, live stream, uh, we uh, have the new regulation coming in Europe. Plus also uh, there will be uh, the question from Val in the chat. Uh, there are discussions about adding more strict crypto accounting rules. Uh, how do you believe how it will affect uh, the Web3 startups? The regulation, the tightening okay. regulation and taxation. I can I can take that first. Sure. Uh, so I think, uh, Mica, especially in the European Union, uh, Mica is a, a big uh, block of regulation that will regulate a big good chunk of the of the crypto industry. Um, and uh, right now, it looks like most of DeFi won't necessarily be regulated in any way. It's just regulating the the borders, the on ramps, the off ramps, uh, the centralized exchanges. Uh, and those need to be regulated, right? That's, uh, and CBDCs, of course. Uh, and those uh, need to be regulated. Um, we need to make sure that stable coins have the right backing uh, and we don't get another Luna. We need to make sure that uh, 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 centralized exchanges have some reporting just like normal stock trading uh, companies do and we don't get another FTX, right? Uh, so uh, that I think that's going to be a good thing. Uh, and this will actually open up the doors for a lot of the big incumbents to join the DeFi space, right? Because uh, when those regulations aren't there, uh, they can look at the current market conditions and say, okay, we're this, if this blows up and we invested 100 million, we're going to lose a lot of money, right? Or a billion or two, uh, we're going to lose a lot of money. Um, if there are regulations there, uh, it's going to be easier for them to justify to their LPs of actually going into crypto, right? Yeah, that's yeah, a I, I agree. Yeah, Mark, go on. Uh, I completely agree. And... Uh... Uh, also, what was part of the FTX crash is uh, the accounting. It was also part of it. So we really need like uh, good regulations on this. Because really what our investors are struggling with is the regulations. By the way, Mark, uh, you are talking to Web3 investors on a daily basis, collecting mm -hmm. feedback from startups, sharing with them deal flow of new startups from InMind platform, discussing with them their criteria, shift of focus. Tell us how this FTX story influenced investors, VC investors in crypto and Web3. Uh, you don't name no. the names, please. Yeah. <laughs> but in general, what trends uh, do you see? I will, I will not name names. Yet. Some people know here. And uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, so uh, it really affected uh, the VC space. Uh, so some deals were going to be closed. And uh, due to this crash, like 
we had a shift a complete like uh, post not a, a decline but they postponed the investment but uh yeah so it, it had a huge impact and now investors are like you know Nelly also through your expertise, you know how investors in the crypto space were fast in investing. Like after two, three weeks of meeting a startup, they, they used days. to invest in it. <laughs> or days, yeah. <laughs> but uh, usually cycles also. Yeah, so uh, it was uh, really uh, a fast process and they used to invest like, I don't want to say blindly, but uh, maybe they uh, it was a flow and they were going with the, with it. So now I think they are thinking twice and like doing a due diligence uh, more rigorous on the business, on the legal, on the financial. So uh, I think that the FTX like uh, invited investors now to, to dig deeper in the financials of the startup uh, because any founder can come and, and tell us about these numbers. But if you don't have audited statements, you don't have like uh, really good uh, documents supporting what you are saying, still nothing. And they have to make like, uh, of course, I'm not talking about all the investors the in the Web3, but many of them. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that really invited like uh, them to revise the Web2 method, like take uh, <laughs> a couple of months to a year to invest in a, in a, in a company. Uh, so yeah, I think um, they are like, uh, some of them stopped. Some of them are like uh, not investing uh, blindly and uh, taking more time in investment. But I'm still positive about it. Uh, but uh, on at least uh, among investors with whom I had a chance to catch up after the FTX bankruptcy files, um, none of them have uh, lost money directly in FTX or uh, whatever their affiliates is. Uh, but at the same time, you are right. It uh, definitely kind of pressed them uh, to pause the ongoing deals, uh, get a step back and think twice because they feel very unconfident what will happen next. How big will be this snowball? What other entities will uh, collapse um so uh, do you have yeah, as you said uh, i agree it's a snowball and uh, i'm afraid we're gonna see i'm not uh, predicting i'm trying to predict but uh, i hope not but i uh, i think we're gonna see other collapses but uh, if the if the founders have strong infrastructure behind their project and strong business model that uh, uh, what Leo said also about transparency, um, like, you know, when you are transparent with your customers and everything. So it's really a, a big plus. And, uh, and it's also about the team, how, like, so maybe the investors should work from, what we can learn from also FTX is the investors should work more closely with the teams and uh, discuss everything. So uh, there needs to be full transparency and regulations on this part also. So it needs to be agreed on both parties, maybe in an agreement uh, legally uh, about, no, I'm not saying that uh, they are controlling them 100%, but they need to, to see what they are doing and keep the investors uh, in the loop of what they are doing. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, guys, I have another question in our LinkedIn live stream uh, from Alban Richard uh, from Moonshot Labs. Uh, he's asking about FTX tokenomics and uh, it to be maybe not screened correctly and uh, the problems around this its tokenomics. Did any of you even uh, look at it uh, or have any insights on this? If not, it's also okay because <laughs> we're not obliged to uh, study tokenomics of each and every uh, big project if we're not investing in it. No? No, to be honest, yeah. Didn't get the chance to get deeper into this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, mean, yeah. I think that creates some need for the thought. Uh, maybe we should have a look when we have time one day uh, and uh, and understand if there is anything to do with economics. However, I doubt uh, because even with the perfect economics, the the whole collapse was not triggered by the by this. 
Okay. Uh, so uh, another question, uh, guys. Uh, Alex already mentioned that there are so many things to fix in uh, defined Web three before going to mass adoption. Uh, you said all of you three agreed that um, the FTX crash and all the problems with centralized entities will more or less slowly shift the community interest towards real Web3 decentralization and not just blah, blah. Uh, can you explain, um, focusing on your particular project? So Leo about Ava, Alex about uh, FarmXYZ, Fido about by Barter, what is missing, what is needed for your project uh, to go to the next level from the adoption perspective? What do you need? Another FTX? <laughs> or what is missing here? Yeah. Um, more awareness education. It's kind of, you know, average reply. Who will do this awareness and education? Everyone has to, right? So uh, any ideas? What is missing? Maybe you know some factor uh, that is uh, missing right now, but can be fixed by joint efforts. I would say uh, some standardization of the whole DeFi ecosystem, at least from a tech point of view. What do you I mean? mean? Uh, well, there's uh, for the people who are developers in the whole DeFi ecosystem, uh, each and every platform uh, created their own APIs and their own ways of like creating a pool, for example, right? Uh, so, if you want to build something on top of them, you have to integrate each and every one manually. There are some uh, initiatives on improving uh, and creating standards, but they aren't necessarily adopted. Uh, so I think, um, and this is something I was talking to the BMB chain team as well. Uh, we need a way, and especially to, uh, the big guys in the industry need a way to start and push improvements on the on the standards, right? ERC-20 has two or three different uh, ver uh, versions of improvements that weren't adopted by anybody. Uh, with, and uh, for even for the pools as well, there are lots of standards that weren't necessarily adopted by the platforms. Uh, I think just building a set of standards will allow everybody to compose uh, different options way early, way easier, right? Uh, and allow um, other startups to fix some of the things that uh, the original protocol didn't necessarily think of, right? Or uh, just uh, like we do, uh, go towards another uh, market segment, right? Maybe the original uh, protocol like GMX, for example, is targeting full-time traders uh, and we can bring them the retail crowd to invest in their liquidity pools, so those re uh, so those full time traders can actually have the liquidity to do uh, trading. Right, um, this is not really easy to do with uh, in a standardized way from a tech point of view. And yes, of course, for the for the uh, rest uh, for the um, education and uh, um, content and everything we're all responsible to do that right every entrepreneur in the crypto ecosystem is responsible to do that and probably none of them have the time to do it but <laughs> we need to do to create more content and uh, help educate the community by the way it would be cool to join efforts in creating educational content because indeed uh, everyone has uh, to do two things in parallel one is educating your community about your particular product. And second, educating general community on what is crypto web three in, in general, yeah? And bringing more people, more newbies. Uh, like, you know, simply when I first time installed MetaMask, it took me four hours, guys. I'm ashamed to maybe I'm an idiot, but four hours to understand how it works and how can I make a transaction. And luckily, I had a lot of friends whom I could call and they just told me what button to click. I feel sorry for people who do not have this network 
and who have to deal with all this by themselves. Uh, so for the second part, general content, uh, general education, uh, I believe that it is very, very silly to do it one by one, each by each, but uh, uh, maybe we could expect some joint platform to share uh, the educational content like this. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. I, I met some guys uh, when I, at, at the Nearcon in Lisbon this um, um, this year, and uh, the guy we've been building, like, uh, been working on the educational stuff, on onboarding people, right? So, and they told me that they had some issues, right? Uh, because it's very complicated to build some scalable uh, stuff that can bring lots of people. So if you launch your online uh, course or some YouTube channel, it doesn't mean you get on board like, you know, millions of users <laughs> after that. So yeah, uh, in, in, if we can solve it in some way and, and uh, find the model how to bring the more people that that would be great yeah yeah and uh, uh, mm -hmm. what do you think ava is missing for uh mass adoption or for reaching the next level uh well it's it's a good point i mean from the business perspective the whole market for the cross chain swaps uh is not too big to be honest so people are like that are really swapping assets swapping specific tokens and there are not, not so many people like that. So like, like specifically look, looking for some places to swap the token, right? Uh, but overall, as we are more B2B platform, uh, we, um, we want to see more uh, apps building, right? On, on, on different ecosystems. And they, we want to see more developers that they open to make their applications cross chain and they are not limited to one chain, right? Because uh, there are still some developers and some builders that believe that it's fine if you just uh, 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 go with just one chain and then build that separately on a chain. So our goal is kind of educate people that on our approach that we are kind of changing the paradigm right here. And we, we hope that uh once we will do that job and we also by the way uh in in talks with many uh content creators on the educational content as well right so we want to uh spread the word and explain developers that uh, it's much easier to just to connect to one sdk and make your uh yeah, applications cross chain i mean this is not like uh, promotional stuff here but just yeah sharing what, what i think about that yeah and what do you think of standardization that Alex mentioned? Uh, because uh, from one perspective, I, I like the idea of industry standards and especially some, you know, common ethics approach. Uh, but it comes, it brings me back to another question. Who will set up the standards and who will control it? Because uh, it is very, very easy that the monopolists, like Fido said, uh, CZ and Binance, yeah, uh, with a couple of other big players, take over this topic and then set up the standards, set up the control bodies, uh, do everything. And then somehow one day we are waking up in Web3 being like a totalitar community. Uh, what do you think of this? Well, actually, it's really complicated. I, I mean, I believe that uh, in in like sense, how to say um, that, like people with more power and uh, like like uh, companies who with with more, with more power, right? They they drive the market and they set the rules. So it's a kind of complicated question. I, I don't have, to be honest, any answer on this. Yeah. Uh, no worries about it. Maybe Fido has. Yeah. Give uh, us some, you know, revolutionary. You know, <laughs> I, personally, I mean, I'm, I'm coming from a totally different um, experience. You know, I, I, I feel strongly about the neglect which the centralized systems and the so-called big players have, how they have actually neglected 
um, a section of, of people, the unbanked and underbanked. Okay, and I think it's an error in its um, totality. And um, we can't depend on them to create any standards. We, we absolutely can take that risk on depending on these big, so-called big players to create standards. I mean, look at the mess FTX cost, okay? Prior to this, everyone was thinking they were the ones who were, were the best, they were the ones who had all it took to make a difference in the industry, but you can see how it turned out, okay? So I, I would take a position, my position is, is pretty clear, and um, I think things need to be done differently. And differently in the sense that startups like um, ourselves, I think the onus lies on us to spearhead this, what I'll call a movement, you know, to making a difference. We can't, we can't rely on the old players who have learned the, the tricks, the bad actions to set any standards. Okay, I mean, every one of us here has come into this space because we identified a gap in the industry which we have spent time and resources trying to build to fill those gaps. So rather than hoping that some big players come and um, create standards, um, I, I think projects need to interact more, um, partnerships within um, new projects, especially in the decentralized um, crypto space should be encouraged where people can be looking at what each other I mean, is doing and then um, you know, come together and create a new force. Because I mean, every one of us is in this space because there's a gap which we're trying to fill. So together, we can come together and you know, do the right things, set the standards ourselves. You know, that's that's absolutely my position because I mean, um, Farm XYZ is doing something beautiful, AY is doing something great, and Biberta is doing something novel and beautiful. And if you look at it, every aspect which these projects are touching can all all come out from the cent from centralized crypto. Okay, um, we can come together, work together, and chat the new cause for decentralized crypto, in my own opinion. Thank you. Well, uh, it could even work because I'm, uh, while you were talking, I was recalling uh, attempts to set up standards, previous attempts. I remember after ICO era, uh, some bigger uh, market players, I think it was Cardano and few others. I, I don't remember everyone. Uh, they were doing this also industry initiative, like um, ethical crypto business, something like that. And it was, of course, marketed and uh, featured everywhere in every media. And they made open letter and a lot of signatures from big market players. And uh, do you know about this nowadays? <laughs> Nobody even remembers this. And I think there were a couple of more such type of attempts uh, and they always create a lot of hype, a lot of marketing and then end up nowhere. So maybe if uh, there can be done an attempt from the bottom, uh, from startups, well, why not uh, three of you join efforts, sign some uh, industry standards, bring, we will bring hundreds of other startups uh, to join this initiative, and then maybe this will work. Agreed. That sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, why, why not? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if it happens one day, uh, this video that will be remain public, uh, it will be a kind of public declaration, first public declaration of industry standards that are not developed yet. <laughs> but but maybe Ava or Farm XYZ or by Barter will develop it one day. Or maybe Mark will. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm seeing many startups, so uh, I'm come, I'm getting new idea. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, for, for us at by Barter, um, I'm sorry, I'm always talking about by Barter. Um, for us, we believe, you know, the aspect of accessing crypto 
P2P in a P2P format, which is the soul of the blockchain. It's too important to be caged within the four corners of centralized exchanges. Okay, so the standard which we are setting is we have set P2P free as a service and everyone can access that service irrespective of the decentralized exchange or centralized exchange, which, which you, you, you're, you're comfortable with, okay? P2P should be accessible. And I mean, we can, we, we, we've done so much work and I mean, um, we should be encouraged and I mean, set this standard in, in, in concretize this standard, if I may, if I may say so. Sounds reasonable for me. Uh, Mark, you have to add anything here? Uh, actually, I want to add, it's good that we talked about the topic of uh, monopoly because uh, really, as you said, Nelly, it's, um, it's a topic that uh, unfortunately not many people talk about. But if we think about it on the long run, if you have one monopoly and they will put their regulations, so it will be a kind of dictatorship maybe. So it's uh, really scary. And uh, uh, this is why, as uh, Fido, maybe Alex said, so we need to uh, have gaps uh, since we are filling gaps in the market as startups, we uh, should encourage it to be. I think Mark is breaking down. Is it him or me? Uh, like uh, standing yeah. regulations. Mark. Because to, to encourage, oh, sorry, sorry, I have a story here. Yeah. It sounds like some censorship. Once he started to talk about monopoly and freedom, he's censored by his internet provider. So, <laughs> okay. so, Mark, are you here? <laughs> I think he's having some network issues. Yeah, seems so. So Mark, let us know when you are back and uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, not only they censored me, they kicked me out also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please repeat everything you said about uh, monopoly and uh, dictatorship because on this, uh, on this part, uh, you were censored. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the main point is about maybe because of censorship, but we won't the, be able to make the, it. Mark, Mark, the I'm long sorry. Run, it's, it's something uh, scary we should uh, think about, and uh, then shouldn't be governing the. Yeah, uh, sorry for this technical fuck up, guys. Uh, uh, sometimes it happens. And uh, yeah, Ma Mark, you're breaking down really, really breaking up uh, very hardly your internet. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, we need to support all the startups, right? Not one <laughs> a monopoly in the market. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is a good summary. Okay, guys, I promised you only one hour discussion, and uh, I hope that those people who will watch it in recording will have uh, a lot of thoughts uh, about what we just discussed. But we are planning to target not only Web3 savvy people, uh, we also want, as we discussed, uh, to bring more enthusiasts, more new people uh, to the idea of Web3 and decentralization. So at the end of this discussion, as my last question for today, uh, can each of you give one core message uh, to those interested, curious minds who will probably watch this video or shortcut uh, and uh, feel curious about um, blockchain, crypto, NFT, whatever, but not yet bought in uh, the decentralization, the Web3 topic, why it is that important and why they should uh, start moving, shifting into Web3. 
Okay, so I think I should, I'll take this first. Um, first and foremost, I'll just use this opportunity to say, um, to say some words of encouragement to those who lost uh, fortunes due to the collapse of uh, the FTX exchange. Um, a lot of, I mean, it's disheartening and a lot of people are in um, pains right now in circumstances which I mean, I can't even imagine. So if you're watching this video, um, I mean, um, on behalf of everyone here, I'm extending, you know, our sympathy to, to you. And I mean, we want to encourage you to not give up. It's still a very young space. There's still so much potential um, in, in the blockchain. Come along and learn more about, you know, um, Web3 and decentralized crypto and see how, I mean, you can follow the, uh, these projects here by Bata, um, Farm XYZ and Awa. And I mean, see what they're doing and follow them because I mean, you can, you can build up um, much knowledge, you know, by interacting with these projects and learn how you can protect yourself and, and trust your capability in protecting um, your hard earned investments in the crypto space. Um, I think that, that's it for me. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Fido. And you are right. Um, uh, it, it makes total sense to encourage those people who, uh, who faced these losses, uh, not due to organic market conditions, but uh, due to some uh, silly and uh, arrogant behavior of certain market players, uh, it, it's a disaster, of course. And uh, and guys, uh, hope that um, it uh, it it will pay back in uh, the learning curve and uh, uh, future uh, future successes. Who wants to be next to appeal to the community? Alex, Leo. I can jump in. Yes, yep. I can jump in. Um, so uh, yes, I would say uh, the whole DeFi space offers uh, a lot of uh, opportunities to own your own assets and your own future and uh, kind of uh, actually fulfill Satoshi's dream, right, of having the true decentralized uh, money and investments. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're rebuilding the whole financial uh, ecosystem uh, uh, on in the DeFi space. So I would uh, just uh, follow it closely in the next uh, few years. Nice. Okay, Leo, you are the last but not least. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just want to mention that uh, uh, kind of that's go what what's going on right now. It might be a little bit uh, uh, sounds a little bit scary for for people. Kind of. Uh, thinking about the space that uh, uh, all of these uh, things are, are not really positive, but in fact, uh, the, all of the recent collapses uh, in, in the crypto ecosystem uh, has been from the centralized players, right, uh, and not from the decentralized protocols. Uh, so I would encourage everyone kind of uh, look deeper into the uh, what Web3 offers and uh, and think about a new way kind of uh, that combines the best aspects of, of the previous er eras, right? So, um, yeah, I, I believe that there, there is definitely huge potential and this is just a very early uh, stage in the whole movement and it's, it's a great time to get involved, yeah. Awesome, uh, very inspiring, Leo, uh, thanks. And uh, from my side, uh, guys, uh, uh, with uh, every year, uh, I joined crypto like in 17, 18, starting educating myself about startups, but more like from investment opportunities, uh, you know, good, uh, good potential profits, uh, amazing growing opportunities and so on. But with every year and recently, even every month and every week, I become uh, truly more and more into Web3 and decentralization fundamentals and philosophy because looking at what is going on with our crazy world and we did not even mention what other shit is happening on the planet uh, starting from the war in the middle of Europe and uh, ending from 
uh, with uh, certain restrictions due to COVID uh, um, closed down in uh, Guangzhou and few other provinces, uh, um, uh, Sri Lanka and uh, other regions. So um, I want uh, um, to get rid of uh, this unfairness that uh, is brought by centralized uh, entities, centralized uh, um, companies, uh, centralized players. And uh, yeah, we all see how unfair they are. And uh, actually, during last year, I saw a lot of cases of common people who have nothing to do with tech, who have nothing to do with crypto, where actually crypto and decentralized P2P services literally not save their life, but really uh, saved them in difficult situations when they were immigrated somewhere, when they were uh, out of access to banking services, financial services. So it, it is a proof that it is working and working without uh, any government monopolies or any centralized monopolies. So think of it and uh, start educating yourself about Web3. And to you guys, uh, Alex, Leo, Fido, thank you so much for joining this discussion today. I truly believe that in one year, a maximum couple of years, all three of you will be uh, somewhere in the top uh, feeds uh, of uh, the news uh, as leaders of the big companies uh, who brought a lot of value to the community and to the industry. And I hope to see that all uh, three of you, Ava, Farmix, YZ, and by Barter, will become a billion dollar companies, but not because of speculation, but because of real adoption, usage, and uh, yeah, every second person in this market will be using your tools. So good luck for you with that. Thank you so much, Nele, for, for inviting us. And it's a great, great uh, uh, panel. And thanks, everyone, uh, uh, Alex and. Yeah, uh, it was uh, and yeah, very very good.